Hello and welcome to our lesson about metagame. Metagame usually refers to the current trends in classes, decks and cards. It describes which of them are currently performing the best in any given game mode and in this module you will learn how to recognize those trends and how to select the most advantageous deck and the best cards at any given time. Like with all other competitive online games, you cannot expect to win every match you play, meaning your goal usually is to maximize your win percentage. For that you need to understand the current meta, and being aware of the current metagame is important for many reasons. First of all, you want to know which decks are the best, that way you can pick the best deck available to you out of the pool of decks which you want to play. And secondly, you want to know which other decks are popular and what you can expect to meet on ladder. Knowing which deck your opponent plays before the game even begins is extremely important if you want to maximize your win rate. The landscape of the metagame is generally divided into tiers, which represent the strength of the decks within. Tier 1 decks are the most powerful, flavor of the month decks which have been optimized, tested and proven to work great against most other decks. These decks will tend to give you the highest win rate if you can play them correctly and the cards used in them are usually worth crafting right away. Sometimes the best tier of decks is also called tier S, followed by tier 1, 2 and so on. Tier 2 decks are simply good decks that have a chance against tier 1 decks either by being direct counter or by having marginally lower power level. You can still do very well with them and depending on how well you pilot them and what they counter, they might even fit better for some players. Tier 3 decks are decent decks, often built around a very specific mechanic which people try to make work, but the hardstone ladder doesn't really care about how fun something would be, it only cares about how strong it turns out in reality, that's why there is a clear limit to which you can take a fun idea. Many of these decks are enjoyable to play because they are still somehow optimized and get a decent amount of wins. Tier 4 and 5 is there for the remaining two types of decks. This usually includes decks that play a fair game and fun decks. By fair game we mean simple mid-range aggro and control decks that don't have access to the most powerful cards that would push them into higher tiers, and fun decks which are based around gimmicks and crazy ideas but don't contain any incredibly powerful cards tend to be here at the bottom. The important thing to note about these tiers is that they are not absolute, they simply indicate certain advantages you get for playing specific decks. It is possible to reach high ranks with many low tier decks, it will simply take more effort and time to do it, because while you can get a positive win rate above 50%, it will still be lower with a tier 4 deck than it would be with a tier 1 deck. At the beginning of the season, you can expect to meet all of the strong decks in lower ranks. And aggressive decks are often favored in this period too, but over time people playing higher tier decks will end up in higher ranks, while in the lower ranks you'll find more of the fun and experimental lists. In particular, at the rank floors, at rank 20, 15, 10 and 5, often people play worse decks because they feel free to experiment whenever they cannot lose stars. There are many websites which list deck win rates and rankings monthly, weekly or even in real time as the decks battle each other on ladder. If you want to find out where does a certain deck place in terms of the tiers, look up Hearthstone deck tiers or Hearthstone meta report.